Hello and welcome to this video and today I will be showing you an editor which most people would say is not a good editor or I mean a lot of people I've met would say why are you using that weird shitty editor well the editor I'm talking about is called Vim which you might have heard of uh, I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller there we go so the editor is called Vim this is the editor. Yes, it is an editor inside the terminal, which already puts off a lot of people. And you don't use your mouse, which puts off even more people. <laughs> and it put me off as well. I've not used Vim unless uh, I really had to. But now I actually use Vim for everything, for editing smaller config files, to editing a program, to writing a bigger text. Because just after a week of using it, I realized that when you really get into Vim, it is actually a lot more intuitive than any other editor that I've seen so far. And I'm going to explain to you in this little video, I'm not, going to sh I'm not sure how long it'll be, but I'm going to explain to you how to use Vim. And the first thing I want to show you is how to exit Vim, <laughs> because most people think it's a bit difficult. Uh, this if I'm going to start by explaining the modes in Vim. There's normal mode, there's visual mode, and there is insert mode. Okay, normal mode basically allows you to type uh, commands, to move around, and do that kind of stuff. Uh, visual mode allows you to select something, copy it, you know, like you would with your mouse, like, like this, but just with your keyboard. And insert mode allows you to type. Okay, and at the bottom you can see I'm currently in normal mode. So if I try to type, it would, okay, it does automatically put me into normal mode. If I'm in normal mode, usually couldn't type and that's people are like what I can't type it, don't worry uh, you can go into insert mode really quickly you just have to if you're in normal mode if you're in normal mode as you can see at the bottom here it says normal if you're in that mode you just have to press I and you're in insert mode and you can type away and uh, that's it <laughs> you don't need to do anything else and to quit Vim you need to be in normal mode and I'm currently in normal mode. And to quit Vim, you need to press colon, Q, and uh, I'm going to use the the bang because I don't want anything saved. So Q bang means close it and disregard all changes, even if they haven't been changed uh, saved. And that's how you close Vim. Now this video isn't supposed to be about closing Vim, though. It's about showing you, about convincing you to actually try it out and to be. Uh, to realize that it's actually a good editor if you know how to use it that's a prerequisite because Vim has a steep learning curve but afterwards it's just quite easy uh, the, another thing about Vim though you never really stop learning there's always new stuff you can add and add and um, one of the main features of Vim is well it's completely keyboard driven I'm not you can't really use your mouse for anything. I mean, you could select things, but you can't really use your mouse. Just don't use your mouse. It's forbidden. I'm going to forbid you to use your mouse. <laughs> don't use your mouse in Vim. That's basically it. Okay, this puts off a lot of people. Why wouldn't you use your mouse? Why wouldn't you use that? Why? That's so weird. That's not intuitive at all. It actually is, because you never have to s slow down by typing then going with your mouse typing again you know you just have to be on your keyboard uh, it, and it sounds weird I mean a lot of people I've met were like well the mouse was invented for a reason yeah, yeah it was but you know it's still a lot quicker to just use the keyboard um, it's quite weird though uh, back when I used to use Windows a lot I always used shortcuts for everything uh, especially in the browser shortcuts most people didn't even know about like control T to open a tab control W to close a tab control L to go into the lines things like that most people didn't even know about those and I always thought that using the keyboard was a lot better and I've never really used Vim and I'm not sure why <laughs> but well I have now and I'm, I've been using it for about a week so I'm not a pro I'm st I am st I love it and I'm going to show you why I'm going to hope you will do you will too 
So the first thing I want to show you is um, the Vim config file. It is inside your home folder, so I'm currently in Home F Society, which is my username, which is taken from a show, which you might know. <laughs> so I'm in here, and um, the Vim config file is called VimRC. So we can just type Vim to open the editor, and then VimRC. Yes, I've already opened it, and this is my config file. If you haven't used Vim before, this will be empty. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm not sure, but I think it will be empty. So you wouldn't be seeing any of this. You would just be seeing a blank file. But as you can see, there's tons of stuff you can do with Vim. And it doesn't look that difficult, at least someone who's done a fair bit of programming before. This is just easy stuff, just mapping and all of that. But I want to show you a few of the basic commands in Vim. So the most basic commands is moving around. Um, there's actually two things. You could do that by us using your arrow keys. You know, just like that. You can move around. But actually, it is a lot quicker to use the keyboard, not, not the arrow keys. Mm -hmm. Once again, <laughs> it sounds weird, but it's not. Uh, J to move down. K to move up, H to move to the left, and L to move to the right. Actually pretty easy, at least I think so. Um, then there's a few other commands. For example, if you want to go to the top of the file, you press GG and you're there. How quick is that? And if you want to go to the, to the end of the file, it's just as easy. You have to press Shift G and you're at the end of the file. I think this is super intuitive. And I often see myself, especially in config files, and I need to add something to the end of the line, or to the end of the file, I just do this, this, this. That's how quickly I just got into the end of the line, uh, to the end of the file, and could be typing. And, uh, yeah, I know it sounds scary, it sounds like you need to be master the keyboard, and you kind of do, but it's not as bad as, you, as some people make it out to be. Okay, because you don't have a mouse, it's going to be a bit more difficult to move around. But luckily, Vim has a few very nice moving around features. So I'm currently at the end of line 61, as you can see. And if I want to move back a word, I just press, I just press B. B, 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 B. I move back a word. And if I want to go um, forwards, like to, I want to go to the next word, I just press W. And both commands make sense. B for back, W for word. It all makes sense, and that's another thing about Vim. It uses its own kind of language. If you want to learn Vim, you need to learn a foreign language. But it's not as foreign as you think it is. Uh, it's basically English, just a bit different. Uh, to show you this a bit more in depth, I'm going to open screen key, which will show you all the commands, all the things I enter. So if you have to type in L, you can see L here. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, I'm sorry, but otherwise you won't be able to see it. Okay. So, we're here now, and um, I'm currently on the word searched. And I want to go back a word, I just press B. See? I just press B. That's all I... Okay, I press H. <laughs> but if I just press B, I go back a word. If I press W, I go to the next word. It's as easy as that. Um, Another moving around command is um, zero to go to the start of the line and dollar sign to go to the end of a line. Seems pretty easy as well, doesn't it? I think it does. Then I'm going to show you a few more examples of the Vim language. Not the Vim script, which is what you do to program Vim, but the language Vim uses. So let's say I am on the word searched. And I don't like the word. I actually, it was an accident. I did. I mean, meant to type something completely different. Mm. What you could do, you could go to the word and you know, eh, enter insert mode and delete the word one by one by one by one by one. You know, you could do that, but that's counterintuitive. You don't want to do that. Instead, Vim offers you a few cool things, and one of them means change change inside to change something inside something and then you just type in what you want to change so for example if i say change inside word for c i w it just changes the word and i can type something in now 
What change in sound word basically does, to elaborate on it a bit, is it um, deletes the word and puts you into insert mode. If you want, don't want to be put into insert mode and you want to stay in normal mode, you could just say DIW and you'll stay in normal mode. I'm going to compare DIW, normal mode, CIW, insert mode. And um, you press U to undo something. So that's pretty easy, and if you know the commands, you can get a very good mileage out of using Vim. If you're not happy with the features that Vim offers on its own, there are actually tons of plugins you can use. And here you can see some plugins I have. And the first plugin is called Airline. It's basically a better design of this down here. This is Airline. That's all it does. And then have syntax check, which I've not used yet. Nerd tree, which is very handy. Um, it's this thing on the left side. You can look at your files. And the next one is Control P. What is Control P? Well, it's actually something most Sublime users actually do ha already have. It is um. One second. It's this. It's basically a little file thing. It's pretty handy to use. So if you're not happy with the things that Vim offers you by default, you can add a lot of plugins, but you don't have to do that. Instead, you could just make a plugin yourself or change things the way you want them to be. So for example, if I go to line number 42, or actually line number 44, I think this is a bit more, it's easier to show. You can see I have something mapped. I map means map in insert mode. I'm not going to go over everything, but basically what it does is the following. I'm going to show you actually. Um, uh, yes, I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to open a new Vim file. I'm going to call it um, my test RB. It's a Ruby file, if you didn't know that. <laughs> and I want to make a new function. It's called um, add. And I'm going to call the function add. Addition. Not sure. I'm just going to call it addition. And then, as you may know, um, Ruby has then two brackets. And what I did, um, I pressed comma and then opening bracket, uh, not closing bracket, comma, opening bracket, and it already gives me two brackets. As you can see, it already gives me two brackets. Then I can type something into the brackets, like uh, num1, num2 for the um, addition. And then I press uh, space, space, and then I al already automatically go, go to that thing it made, if you can see. Uh, oh, no. So this, that was Vim, basically, and um, I think you should definitely start using Vim because it is um, how do you explain Vim? It is an editor which doesn't use the keyboard, it's an editor that you need to learn, you need to live by. <laughs> you just need to start using it, start small, maybe start using it as only your secondary editor after Nano or whatever you use and slowly Learn how to use them and learn how to appreciate them. Thank you for watching.